Welcome back to the tutorial series. This is the part 10th of the ionic angular series here. In this part we will be creating the main menu and we'll also implement the infinite loader functionality on the shop page. Okay, so let's start with the main menu. So if you really jump to the ionic documentation and look for ion menu here. So this will be like this. Okay, it's a side menu. And this is the starter code which we can copy. Alright, so I'm gonna copy this section only, this much, and paste it in the tab space, not in tab 1, because I need the menu to be present on each and every tab. So I will go to the parent component at the tabs component here. And I will put it above the ion tabs declaration. Okay, like this. So now, if you go back to the ion tab one page, and I simply comment this out and put the ion menu button back, save the changes, go back to my app. Still not there because I think I missed something. Oh uh, yeah, I missed the iron router outlet. So this is very important that you should put the iron router after the iron menu, and this ID should match your uh, content ID. I guess yeah. So content ID is main. Yeah, should match that thing. So now save the changes. Go back. You see the button is there and just to be double sure that I still have the code commented out okay so if you click the menu button the menu appears close click outside it goes away all right so we can come back here and remove some of the items and I'll only use two of them one is my account and the other one is your logout for logout i'll use an icon also here sign out this icon copy go back paste and i'll use a slot start save the changes let's see how it looks there we go and I need it uh, the icon here I'll put this in a iron label let's see if that makes any difference no slot from here okay and put the non-breaking space and then yes save the changes Well, in order to save time, I'll go. Back. I'll go to my account page. It's not there because I haven't defined any thing. Okay, now it looks better. Okay, for my account, I'll use say user. I'll use this one. So my account space there. 
and NVSV. Save the changes the final time. So now click the my account thing. It doesn't do anything and neither it closes the menu. So what I want here I'll wrap both the iron items in a special button that is the iron menu toggle. This will toggle the menu when you click those buttons or links. So this will should go to tab tab two save. Now, if you go here and click, it will take you to tab 2 and close the menu. Perfect. Our logout will simply implement a logout function. Okay. On and will bind to the click event. So, logout we will define the function in our tabs.page.ts file here. This does nothing as of now. So, log log user log tab. That's it. Save the changes. You will see here. Click, closes the menu, and you see the message here. That's perfect. Now, the final thing for this video will be the infinite loader. For that, you need to switch back to the tabs one page wherein we define the grid. Okay, so after the grid, let me just Collapse it so, so where the grid ends, we'll define the iron infinite scroll tag. So, if you check the documentation quickly, and it's always good to refer the documentation if you are in doubt. So, we have infinite scroll here, okay, which takes an iron infinite scroll content. Okay, so this component calls an action to be performed when the user scrolls a specified distance from the bottom or from the top. Okay, so this is a sample code here. Yeah. I'll show you how we will do it in real time. So first of all, let's define iron infinite scroll. Inside that, we know we will have iron infinite scroll content. Okay, and this has got some attributes. First of all, is the loading spinner without dash it should be anything that we know like bubbles or crescent or dots maybe and the loading text loading text we will put loading more products okay that should be it and here it emits an event when there is a change or when you scroll down and that is I am infinite okay so we will create a function load more data and we'll use the default event object that is emitted also we'll put a threshold of 10 pixels from the bottom okay so whenever, whenever you are 10 pixels away from the bottom this will start loading more data so this is the event the any and we will define the functionality here so first of all uh, we will also display a toast notification when there are no more products so for that we will inject the toast controller so again an inbuilt functionality in ionic so we'll define a toast here and for that we need to make this function async so we can await it so this dot toast controller dot create and again it will take some parameters so first of all put a message here will be no more products 
and I'm in it should be true what else let's say duration I want to do, show it for two seconds and in the buttons I'll have only one button it, so it takes an array of objects inside that you can define text role with side left right and a callback function and the icon okay so the text will be done role or define as cancel so the cancel means it will not have any uh, what do you call it? callback function it simply cancel the or dismiss the post notification and for icon i'm going to use close okay that should be it now you got to check if event is equals to null if that's the case okay we also need a variable here will be current page okay so our current page is one so if the event is null the page will always be one else this is the current page plus plus so we'll increment the page number on each uh, event so the event is fired i mean what we will do we will go to the product service and get all products and we will pass in the page number so you can see we have this page number as optional by default it's one i will subscribe to the uh, new event or not even the observable and it just will give me more products type product array okay so what i will do i'll list i'll add that in the original list first i'll use the concat method here and also the displayed list should be updated with the list of products uh, uh, with, a, with a copy of it okay then if event is not equal to null we want the target to complete we want to complete the event there after every call Okay. and then we want, we want to check that if cross of length is uh, less than 10 that means we have reached the last iteration or the last set of products okay because we know that per page has got a size of 10 products so if the length of the product or length of the array is less than 10 objects so we want to first present the notification okay that there are no more products and you want to disable oops you want to set the disabled flag to true this will stop any more uh, function call okay so it will not check for any more products in the database uh, let me it and for the error part again uh, we are gonna do here we'll put a comma and we'll work on the error case so this will controller uh, no, control uh, Simply log it from the console, and I don't need that piece here. Okay, so let's quickly go through it once more. We get an event from the uh, Ion Ion Infinite uh, event emitter here. So that event will have some data. Okay, so we first create a toast 
uh, notification here so we'll check if the event is null if it is null that means there is nothing happening or nothing has changed we'll set the current base to one but if the event is not null that means the ion infinite event has fired so we'll first implement the current page number and then uh, we'll call the uh, product service to get all the products with the current page number subscribe to the uh, new list of products add it to the current array and mark it as complete okay and then if, if we will check in the same iteration whether the length of the received products is less than 10 or not if it's not then we need we know that there are more than 10 products still available so it will still fire but but if it is less than 10 then it will give us the store notification and will disable the event okay so let's let's check this in action save the changes uh, it's compiled successfully go back to the application let it fetch the first set of products okay so now if i scroll down as you can see my scroll bar here on the right hand side as soon as it reaches the 10 pixel uh, threshold this will start loading more products and here you see I, I got a error so it says page equals to not a number but let's see that what's happening here because if we go to the documentation in WooCommerce so the page is an integer okay so here this current page number uh, let's mark it as one it's a number and page number here let's put a console.log page number it's been sent save the changes go back page number is one okay that for the for the first time so page number is two okay now it works so the only thing I changed here is this initial declaration here okay so that knows it's a type it's a type of number and now we have the second set scroll down page number three loading more products okay we still have more product page number four so we still have more products scroll down loading more products and now we are done so no more products done we have five pages okay this is how your you will uh, can implement the infinite loader functionality okay and i've made the toolbar as dark uh, as it looks pretty cool i believe right so with this i'm gonna finish this particular video in the next video we will work on the search functionality here and we'll also see how we can implement the skeleton text okay we got the menu it works fine and after the search bar we'll work on the sort and the filter functionality so stay tuned with me and if you have any suggestions or any comments so please leave that in the comment section below and i'll see you the next time thank you and have a wonderful day Bye bye